But in the context of not running nandrolone, trimbolone, or trestolone, and keeping your testosterone dosages uh, moderate, sane, right, for hormone replacement therapy purposes, not bodybuilder dosages, then I don't think that that's occurring. Tanner Fry asks, is there any evidence that HCG desensitizes Latex cells? Yeah, so, so a couple of years ago, I made videos about uh, HCG receptor desensitization, right? So there's a combination luteinizing hormone, chorionic gonadotropin receptor, which uses a G-coupled protein, which sends a signal into spermatogenesis when it's activated by luteinizing hormone or human chorionic gonadotropin. At that time, I said desensitization was a thing in the context of taking anabolic energetic steroids, mostly nandrolone, trembolone, trespolone, uh, these are the drugs that bodybuilders take. These are not drugs that are being prescribed. Maybe nandrolone is being prescribed, but trimbolone and tristolone, especially at the dosages bodybuilders use. Since the testicles also have androgen receptors and estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors, there appears to be a feedback when you take steroids at higher dosages and nandrolone or trimbolone and uh, tristolone at higher dosages as well. So it seems that the signaling doesn't really work. Is there clear scientific evidence to support that? No, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. So we can go with anecdotal bro science. From all my years in coaching bodybuilders on cycles consisting of testosterone and a 19 or testosterone derivative that could activate the progesterone receptor, you add in HCG because the testicular shrinkage is substantial to the point it's uncomfortable where the testicles go in the body, right? In a colder climate, and it's very uncomfortable. In an attempt to bring testicular volume up, you add in the HCG. Initially, you get a response, and then they shrink smaller than before. And I've seen this happen over and over again. This is why I made that video a couple of years ago. But in the context of not running nandrolone, trimbolone, or trestolone, and keeping your testosterone dosages uh, moderate, sane, right, for hormone replacement therapy purposes, not bodybuilder dosages, then I don't think that that's occurring. And you can take me as an example. I'm taking 1,000 IOS ATG three times per week without exogenous testosterone. And I even took this on TRT because I wanted my fertility parameters to come back. Um, my fertility and, and testosterone levels have only been increasing since I started this protocol. Of course, that's me, right? But again, if you, if you go through the citations, which I can provide, you see that long-term ATG uh, usage does not shut you down if done um, with co-administration of testosterone at um, clinically accepted dosages. Yeah. And fertility protocols are maybe even higher HCG dosages for years on end. Um, there's one here that I, I know will be a good one considering the presentation you did at Swiss on um, right. carrier oils and inflammation. Uh -huh. uh, from Clayton, he's asking, what are the blood markers that show measure oxidative stress? Oxidative stress. So these are not um, commonly tested for. And I'm not sure if Merrick Health has some of the markers that are related to glutathione, uh, because here in Thailand and in many of the countries, they don't directly test for oxidative stress. You can check for inflammation, that's C-reactive protein, your lymphocyte to neutrophil ratio, your homocysteine levels, your ferritin levels to a certain extent. But regarding oxidative stress, off the top of my head, I'm not entirely sure which markers those are. So you're stumping me a little bit here. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if Merrick Health offers those because usually, um, at least from all the, all the labs that I visited in my years, I never see specific markers for oxidative stress. And all the studies where they mention that, it's all highly specialized lab equipment where they can actually test that. High sensitivity C-reactive protein would be, just by mm -hmm. looking at inflammatory levels, would be a good proxy. Yeah. That has nothing to do with oxidative stress, but if you're in a high oxidative stress environment, uh, your inflammatory markers can go up also, um, but then it's already too late, right? So you're trying to prevent that. Um, when CRP is elevated from carrier oils or processed foods or environmental pollutants or living at high altitudes, um, again, I have an entire deep dive about systemic inflammation and carrier oil on my uh, YouTube channel. You know, there's multiple reasons why they can be elevated, but the, the you know, the, the, the low hanging fruit is either uh, the carrier oil, the diet, or some sort of environmental pollutant. And, and oxidative stress is one of, maybe one of the reasons why inflammatory markers go up, but then you really need to be oxidized uh, for that to go up. So as an example, let's say you take all antioxidants out 
and you run a marathon on steroids, I think your C-reactive protein will not be that substantially elevated compared to eating something that's highly inflammatory or getting some sort of disease that is also highly inflammatory. So um, I, I would preferably test that separately if possible. And otherwise, again, staying on top of your antioxidants, vitamin C, ubiquinol, and acetylcysteine, injectable glutathione, taurine, I mean, boron. I mean, there's so many antioxidants. Vitamin E. It's even even estradiol is an antioxidant in the in the endothelial tissue. So, right, there's more antioxidants than you might realize. <laughs> Does telmisartan aid in lowering hematica? I know this has been reported anecdotally. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if there's much literature on it, but I'd be curious your thoughts are. So, so it it keeps hematocrit favorable assuming you don't overdo your testosterone replacement therapy. And again, telmisartan or enalapril, which is far more potent, that actually lowers hematocrit quite substantial. That's enalapril. Um, telmisartan might modulate it favorably, but if you have sleep apnea or you take steroid cycles, then I see in many cases that, that hematocrit might be lower without it, but it might still not be in range. And again, so, so, you know, you have some educators on the space. I, I take Thomas Hart and, and I never have to donate blood, regardless of how much steroids you take. Um, that's a blanket statement that I would not follow. Again, go with your blood work parameters. If you get a beneficial effects of hematocrit, um, if you take Thomas Hart and you add that in, great. Okay. But this is not the reason to take it. This is a welcome side effect, just like. A blood pressure management is a welcome side effect of Tadalafil, even though that's what it's initially been investigated for. You take Cialis Tadalafil to improve erectile quality, and if you get blood pressure management out of it, win. Now I don't need two medications, I get one medication, two results. And with Telmisartan, right, you take it as a blood pressure medication, and if you get increased erections uh, as a side effect and you get hematocrit under control as, an, as a side effect, then you have, well, three, right? <laughs> three results. And if you get fat loss, which is to be debated, four results that are, you know, two to two to four, there might be something to say for Telmisartan over Cialis, even though I do like Cialis more. Um, any reason for someone over 60 to try HCG monotherapy? Um, and I'm curious if you have any general thoughts around age range with things like enclomiphene or HCG um, and just age-related mm -hmm. cellular decline, if there's going to be a change in effect of this. Right. So, of course testosterone production declines with age, but it highly depends on the, the state of health of the individual. Like I've seen blood work results of 60 years old where testosterone is 600 nanograms per deciliter because they've been active their entire lives and, and they kill it. And they're like, yeah, I feel old. I, I think I want to try some TRT and they go in for blood work and clinically they don't need it, but they might still proceed to give it a try, right? They heard all the benefits and regardless of serum testosterone levels, um, they go through the ringer, try ACG monotherapy first, and now their testosterone is 800, just like mine, because they never touched anything. I, I think my levels could have been higher, but I, you know, had pituitary and testicular shutdown for a decade. 